can share with you. I, I just, can I take or is it? Our guests, we're so glad you're here to hear Dwayne and Sue. Amen. If you could stand with us, we're going to praise and worship our Heavenly Father this morning as a family. Amen. Amen.
focus on you. Thank you. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to
we stand, Father. We stand when everything else seems to be falling down. We stand with you as our strength, Father. You are our strength. Just press in just a little bit. Praise you, Jesus.
it, saith the Lord, and many struggle at believing my promise. For you look at it and you say there is no way, but I tell you, I will perform it. I will accomplish it. But you have to look away from those doubtful things and the unbelief, saith God, and trust and believe that you're coming from a place of something that's already been accomplished through my son. Yea, saith God, look at those things that be not as though they were, saith the Lord. Look unto those things, saith God, that you say, there is no way, there is no possibility. But I tell you, with me all things are possible. For I am the God, saith God, that conquered the enemy, saith the Lord. I am the God, saith, saith the Lord, that, that whooped his tail. Hallelujah. And I want you to realize, saith God, that it is an accomplished work. Something that has already been done, something that's already been, been accomplished, saith the Lord. But you have to just step in and receive what I have done, saith the Lord. Step into what I have for you, saith God. Do not waver at my promise, saith the Lord. For it will do and it will accomplish what I've desired it to do, saith the Lord. For my word will not return to me void, saith God, but it'll, it'll do what I've said it to do, saith God. For as I planted in your heart, saith the Lord, as I planted in your heart, saith the Lord, as I plant it in your heart, saith the Lord, it'll bring forth fruit. It'll bring forth those things that I desire for your life, those things that I have for you, saith the Lord. So don't let the enemy convince you it's too hard, can't be done. I want you to know it's already been done. He is a liar. He is a liar. He is a liar, saith the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. E e uka a ande e umba a si a o unde ele a so i a ando oba a anki a o li a va a se e umba a tika o le a umbe endi a. A ungu oba handa, a ungu ata ali a o do oba ha lose do oba ha unda ali inge angu oba a a ata alu u e ba ha li bi a do ungu ba ha i ando anda a la ha su tari ku ba. E and Allah, and the Oba ha ha kuti de eva hasi Allah. I a tole e singe, and hello, and ho le 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 ba hasund Allah, and hema, and hema ri atai, azotele, azotele. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Uh, tongues and interpretation. When there's an utterance of tongues, interpretation. 
and uh, simply a continuation of the word that we've already heard. It says, that which is accomplished is accomplished. And again, walk in it. For I have done all that there is to do. It is finished, saith the Lord. It requires now your belief. It requires now your stepping into, by faith, what I've already accomplished. For if you step into what I've done, believe what I've done, you shall enter into my rest. Therefore, as you enter into my rest, my peace will be with you, my presence will go before you, and you will know that I'm God, because I am with you forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is His presence to heal and to deliver, to set free, to make the crooked way straight. So we just release that now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's already done. He's already did it. Now we just receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Healing. Deliverance. Praise God. Making the crooked way straight. Thank you, Lord. We just release that. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We receive that. Hallelujah. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Oh, he loves us and he cares for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to release you to go love on each other because I will lose control of you. <laughs> and uh, so, but you, you can just hug that person to one side of you and then I'm going to ask you to sit down. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, worship team. We are so glad that you are here today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah. There will be plenty of time after the service to, to visit and to catch up and all of that. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, we, um, the, the, there's a, a picnic today. We're wearing our picnic clothes, if you're wondering what we're doing. And we've got our picnic clothes on. And uh, uh, some of you, you're in your same clothes you, you always are in, but praise God. Uh, but just, we're just so glad that you're here today, and just welcome, and uh, welcome to all our guests, and uh, praise God. We don't have our online family with us today because the internet is down, but it is being recorded, and uh, we'll get it up later. So uh, you can watch that later. Um, praise God. Um, Right, right after the service, following the service immediately, we have our picnic. It's an indoor picnic. We found out that we can control the weather a whole lot better inside. And so uh, we want to invite all of you. Maybe you didn't even know we were going to have a picnic. You are invited to come. We have plenty. We have uh, hot dogs and hamburgers. And uh, so come on over to the Family Center when we get done. It'll be a great time to visit and to... Uh, uh, to uh, Greet one another and have a good time. And those who, who want to do the outside water activities, we encourage you. I don't care what you're wearing. If you want to go down the slide, you are welcome to. So praise the Lord. So that's following the service immediately. Uh, we have you know, Dwayne and Sue with us, and uh, we support uh, Roca Blanca missions. Um, it's one of the things that our church does, and uh, we're planning a missions trip there uh, in the end of March next year. And so we're excited about that. Um, but as we were visiting with them yesterday, um, you know, I asked them just, you know, some needs and some things that they, they needed. And um, we're, we're going to receive an offering here in just a little bit. And 
the way we do it is we, as you leave, there's boxes. Uh, there's a box at the, the exit door, also in the foyer. Uh, there's also one up here. And uh, you can drop your offering into that. We're just taking one offering, so your regular tithe, your donation that you want to give towards uh, their ministry, you can just make it out to Faith Community Church and just note on there it's, it's for Dwayne and Sue, the missionaries, um, some, some descriptions so we know that it goes to them and, uh, and so that we can get that to them. But one of the things they were talking about is that uh, the, the church in Yachtepec uh, is in need of a portable uh, sound system, right? You'll correct me if I get any of this wrong. And uh, it's, it's, uh, only, it's only $1,500. You know, that's nothing. That's nothing for Jesus, right? And, uh, but I, as I just want us to, you know, if, if that touches your heart, you want to give towards that, you can, you can put s sound on there or uh, sound system or something so we know we'll put it towards that if we go over that. Of course, it all go. It'll all go to them. Whatever's extra, but I believe there's going to be a lot of extra. Amen. Everybody good for that. And uh, but I just think it's important that we plant that uh, into that church, and it's something they have a need. And as a church, we uh, here we help support the church at uh, Hukila and uh, now Yaktepet, kind of as a, a, a combo thing. So we want to bless them, and and hopefully when we go on the mission trip, we'll be able to to uh, go up there and, and see them and, uh, because it's up in the mountains from the coast where the mission base is. So praise the Lord. So we're just, we're just going to look to the Lord and ask him to show us what we should do. Yeah, we're just stewards of his money. And uh, so we just ask him. And, uh, and so you can just write your check out to Faith Community Church, you know, whether it's your, your regular tithe or towards the sound system, or you can just put for Roca Blanca or Sue... Uh, and Dwayne, uh, whatever, and we'll make sure that gets on to them. Amen? Any, any questions? Sometimes I give instructions, and I know that people are going, I don't have any idea what she said. So everybody good? Everybody understand? So we're going to pray over it, and then as you exit today, as we leave the service, you can just drop your offering into the little uh, boxes back there. You can also give online through our church app or through our website. You can also give that way. If you go to our website, which is faith, the number four, greatbin.com, there's a place you can give online, and it allows you to specify what it's for. So we can also do it that way. Amen? Amen. So we're going to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody in here pray? Boy, that was, boy. <laughs> okay, you're not listening. Does anybody in here ever pray? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I probably didn't say it right. So, I'm, but I'm gonna say it one one more time. Anybody in here ever pray? Yeah. Okay. Hallelujah. Anyone in here that never pray? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we're all gonna pray. So let's let's pray, Father. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. We thank you for all those churches that have been raised up in, in Mexico. We thank you for the ministry of Duane and Sue and Roca Blanca and all the other people that are that are involved in that, Lord. Lord, that we just thank you. We praise you. We give you glory for the people coming to know you and to be rescued from, from hell. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. And Lord, we just speak to that seed, that it be released, that it multiply, and that, Lord, there'll be blessing upon blessing in the name of Jesus. Lord, that you are the God of more than enough and that there'll be more than enough for every need, and we thank you for it, and we praise you for it. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give to you. We thank you, Lord, that we're co-laborers with you, and we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I, I'm not doing any more announcements. And everybody said, amen. amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, we're just so happy to have uh, Dwayne and Sue here. But I think we're supposed to do, Charles, do you want to go first with the, the student thing? OK. They need uh, people to help support uh, students uh, uh, to pay their way. And I'll let you explain that. Tomorrow, it's hard to believe tomorrow, the 29th of August, we have more than 140 students coming to the missions base to begin the school year. We have Bible school, three years of Bible school, three years of music school, 
This year we have the largest class in the, in the school of worship that we've ever had before. We have uh, our more than 60 students for uh, multi-grade school. The multi-grade school, since the beginning of the year, we have been uh, expanding, uh, building onto the building, and uh, they're hoping to re receive more than 60 students this year, they graduated last year, there was 100, or there was 55, I believe, that they had. This year, they're hoping to receive much more than that, more than 60. I don't know the number that actually, uh, that they have enrolled for multi-grade, but we're having a lot of students come tomorrow. Um, it costs us $350 per student per month to have them there at the base. But because uh, the missions base is in the middle of uh, the coast of Oaxaca, which is a uh, poverty-stricken area, we only charge um, 250 for the student. And we look to others to raise the other $100. If you partner with a student, become a student sponsor, there are brochures out there that you can pick up. Um, the brochures on a student sponsor, we have some other things out there too. There's some pens that say Roca Blanca on them and our, our phone number and address. Take one, they're free. Every time you're writing something, you can remember us and pray for us. There's also some brochures about the mission base out there that are free for the taking as well to explain all of the ministries. But there's brochures for student sponsor. If you're interested in sponsoring a student, $100 a month, take a brochure. Um, we only have a few of them out there and we need about 30 more student sponsors for tomorrow. So. Uh, if you're interested in sponsoring a student, you'll get uh, a letter from them every uh, four times through the year. And uh, I often translate a lot of those letters. And when I translate them, I'm encouraged by what God does in their lives. And so uh, I encourage you to sponsor a student. You're sowing in good goods, so. Hallelujah. Yeah, we, uh, we help sponsor, uh, Joe and I personally, and it, we do get those letters, and it is encouraging. And uh, once in a while, when I, I feel inspired, I write back. And, uh, but it is, it is a good thing to do and, and to pray for that student. So praise God. Amen. Are you ready, Dwayne? Are you ready? Okay. Hallelujah. Well, let's give him a good warm welcome. Yeah, so, uh, thank you, Charles, for explaining you know, we have a last command. If, uh, if you're here today, bought with the blood of the Lord Jesus, uh, we have a command to go into all the world, make disciples of all the nations. And, uh, of course, we're in South Mexico. We went there 32 years ago. And, uh, you know, you might think of Mexico just, well, Mexico is Mexico, Mexicans. But uh, where we are in the state of Oaxaca, we have 17 indigenous tribes. They're nations. And so we are working with those nations, been working with them for the last 32 years. And when Charles talks about students, we're talking about discipling. We do have a K through 12, you know, elementary school, but then the Bible school for discipling the nations is three years. The worship school, of course, is three years. And now also, because of, thank God for Kansas, God said he would uh, raise up a work in Kansas that would help us. Uh, a couple came down from Sterling, uh, three years ago, I believe now, and uh, they're running a trade school. So we have Bible school, worship school, trade school, and then God's done a wonderful thing to us in calling us in the last five years to uh, move into a, uh, into a higher dimension. How many of you believe there's a higher dimension? You see, we go from faith to faith and glory to glory. We don't just stay uh, where we are. We're being transformed into his image. And so uh, God called us into a higher dimension, a greater anointing in the areas of healing, deliverance, and uh, fulfilling his original discipleship call to go preach the kingdom of God, heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead. And that is original call. It never was changed. <laughs> it's the same call. It's the same Jesus. And so uh, that's what we're doing. We've been there for uh, Sue and I for the past 32 years. And Thank you, Sue, for your, uh, she's followed me through a lot of different situations. Give Sue a hand, please, this morning. And, uh, that's all. And I'll just conclude uh, this aspect by saying, uh, Charles, uh, 
to my understanding, I think we've had, uh, we have over a thousand uh, disciples who have graduated from the training center. And they are presently uh, pastoring. They've helped uh, establish uh, 74 churches at this wow. time. Wow. 74. Let's give them a hand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we don't want to touch the glory. Uh, we just went there in obedience and, uh, you know, having done all, uh, consider ourselves as, uh, you know, just simply being obedient. Thank God for grace. Thank God for uh, callings. Thank God for his, uh, his goodness. Well, you know, it's a tremendous thing. Uh, soon I know many of you, uh, some we, we don't know. Uh, <clears throat> we love all of you that we know, you know, we're friends with many of you. And, uh, you know, it's a tremendous thing to, to stand here before you today. Uh, think about it. Uh, we come, Ephesians chapter 2 tells us so clearly that we are the dwelling place of, of, of God in the Spirit. So when we come together like this, you yes. know, uh, think about it. I mean, we literally just come together uh, to worship the living God, invisible, all-powerful God. And isn't that amazing? Yes. That we can actually uh, come and do that. I mean, literally meet with him. Uh, that's the whole point of coming. Of course, it's not coming to, to see us. It's coming to meet with him, to hear from him, and uh, to receive from him. So it's a tremendous responsibility to stand here before you this morning. There's a thousand things we could talk about, you know. But we really want to hear, you know, hear and hear. Yes, yes. And uh, we want to, uh, what is he saying to us now? You know, what's he going to say to you? What does he want to say to us? And so uh, it's not a light thing just to stand here before you. You know, I, I need to know what he's saying and then say that to you. You know, Jesus said, I'm only saying what he's saying. I'm only doing what he's doing. <laughs> now that's perfection. I don't know how many of you would like to walk in that perfection. Only say what he's saying, only do what he's doing. That's tremendous, isn't it? Yes. That's tremendous. Just say what he's saying. <laughs> Just do what he's doing. Now, if we could get, if we could get that, I'll tell you what. Uh, Pawnee County, Barton County, all of Kansas would change uh, very quickly if we just said what he's saying and did what he's doing. Uh, somehow we get disconnected sometimes. You know, it says the carnal mind yep. is separation from him. And uh, the scripture talks about carnal mind Christians. And, uh, but you know, the carnal mind says it's enmity against God. So uh, to hear him and understand him, sometimes our mind gets in the way. Yes. Now I've got about 150 scriptures and uh, I've got about 30 minutes. <laughs> Because if you, if you started the hamburger fire, you know, you don't want it to go out. <laughs> but I know you're going to be able to follow. Uh, some of this might be flyby. But the main text that I have, and, uh, and uh, bless Joe back there. You've got to pray for him this morning to get all these scriptures up on, the, up on the board. But I want you, if you have your Bibles with you, please, open up to the book of, of um, Exodus. And think about what was happening in the book of Exodus. God had called his people out, but he didn't just call them out to leave them out. He called them out to take them in. Yes. Uh, we've been called out to go in. And, and we've been called out to go into the works that he's prepared before us from the foundation of the world. We're not just called out to just kind of hang out and then go to heaven someday when the body drops off. Now, we're called out to complete his will here upon the earth. So, you know, you think about Moses and the three million people that were with him. And they had a big job in front of them. Uh, they weren't just going to go across the little river. Uh, it was a swollen river when they crossed the River Jordan. But they were also facing many giants in the land. Now, there are giants in the land today. And uh, I'll tell you what, Sue and I have been up here for about two. We've been here for how long have we been here? I don't know. We've been, <laughs> we've been here for a while, about six weeks, I believe. They came up July the 15th, and we've been in various places. And many, everywhere we've gone, we've heard uh, people's hearts are troubled. Uh, people's hearts are concerned about this country, you know? And I, I find that sometimes a, a, a conversation would be, uh, what's going to happen here? What's going to happen? 
uh, is this thing going to turn? Or what's what's, what's going to happen? I believe you're all with me, aren't you? Yes. There's some real giants that we're facing. Yes. And uh, now let's consider something. Look at, uh, at the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus, and uh, uh, Moses is on the mountain. And uh, he is communicating with God. And, uh, and he said, this is what God said to him on the mountain. And actually, if, you, if we just stopped with this verse, if you could just get it, and if I could just get it, this is it. God is telling Moses, he said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Would you like to read that all together? Yeah, you can just look on the board. We're looking at the New King James Version. Okay, one, two, three. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Now, to go on in the scripture, Moses spoke back to him and he said this. Then Moses said to God, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. Now that's something to think about. If the presence is not going with you, if God's presence is not going with us, we're going to fly back tomorrow. We're going to be uh, there tomorrow evening in our missions base for the opening of uh, all the students returning. If his presence doesn't go with us, you know, we don't want to go. For then, listen carefully to this. For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us? Now meditate on it. So we shall be separated. Separate. Your people and I from all the people who are upon the face of the on the, on the face upon the face of the earth? Excuse me. Look, you know what separates us from all the people on the face of the earth? Of course, the blood of the Lord Jesus. But the other thing that separates us from all the, from all the other people is God's presence with us. Yes. You see, God's presence isn't with the people that are out there, out there uh, that do not that are not bought by his blood and baptized in his water and in his fire. You see, uh, I'm finding in our area, uh, we are living more and more in a demonized society. Pa pornography is rampant and all the stuff that goes with it. And this isn't just addiction. This isn't just soulish habit. It's demonic. People are becoming demonized, you see. Well, we need to be a people who are walking in the glory. God's presence with us. And uh, going on, your people and I, uh, uh, you see, we're separate from all others because God's presence goes with us. And we are separate from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. So the Lord said, back to Moses now, I, now listen carefully, here's the promise. This morning, we've heard two different prophetic utterances about it's finished and his, uh, it's done. We just have to step into it. Now, the Lord says, I will also do this thing that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. Let's give him a hand. Now consider what we've read and what we've heard. What separates us? God said, I'm going to do this for you. My presence will go with you. Uh, and this will separate you from all other people. And Moses then said, if you don't go with us, we don't want to go. And God said, I will go with you because I found, you found favor in my sight. You found grace. Can you receive it? Yeah. And I know you. Now, I hope that's comforting to you. You see what I mean? I'm going to say it again. He promises to go with us because he knows us and we found favor in his sight. But now I want to add something. <clears throat> we have a challenge. Uh, I remember back in 1970 when God 
has saved me by his blood and got me out of hell. And uh, not long after, uh, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. The day that I chose to follow him and left all and walked away from it, the very same day, his power came upon me. I fell to the floor. I woke up the next morning speaking in another language. I didn't even know what that was. But what happened to me? <laughs> Somebody who was with me laughs and said, well, you know, you're speaking in, in the words of the Spirit. I said, well, what's that? You know, I didn't know anything. I, I didn't even have a Bible. It was about, uh, so I, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I knew about the anointing. I knew about his presence. I knew to some degree about his power. I knew to some degree about the, the sense of his, of his presence. But about four years passed by, and I went away into a uh, place where I determined I was going to spend 10 days in prayer and fasting. I had come up here to Kansas. We were out in Roselle, and uh, wow, I was just four years old in the Lord. People began to get saved. And uh, they put a sign on my door and said, Pastor. It, it terrified me. I said, I don't know how to be a pastor. I've never been a pastor. I've never even s hardly seen a pastor. I, I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I, had, I had come down here, and uh, Fred, at that time, uh, this place was just rocking, you know. God was moving. It still is. And so uh, I went away uh, and uh, to to. Actually, it was in Ness City, Kansas, and I found a hotel, and they were probably the only one, and I told the, told the manager, uh, please don't call the police. I'm going to shut the door. I'm going to stay here for 10 days praying and fasting. He kind of looked at me a little strangely. But anyway, uh, on the fourth day, I was, uh, I'll never forget this. I can't forget it. I was kneeling at the bed, and I had the Bible laying open in front of me. And I was just, you know, the way we do. I was just uh, meditating and, and praying. The door was locked. And uh, suddenly, someone came into the room. And I had my eyes closed. I did not want to, and I, I really didn't want to open my eyes. I'm testifying to you all now. And I, I was just meditating. Who is here? And I'm thinking, well, you know, it might be an angel. Oh, maybe it's, maybe it's the Lord. Maybe I'm just having a visitation. Well, finally, you know, I said, Father, please tell me who's here. And as immediately when I said that, I heard as clear as if I'm speaking to you right now, I heard him say, when he, the Holy Spirit, has come. Now, the emphasis there was on the he. I already had the baptism. I knew about the Holy Spirit, but I didn't know the he. I didn't know the him, you see. And so my eyes were opened. Now, when we talk about abiding in his presence or, you know, he's, Moses, we'll come back to our, our, our main scripture here now. Moses is saying, if you don't go with us, we don't want to go. We're not going to go. And God's saying to Moses, you've found favor in my sight. I know your name, and I'll go with you. Well, where were they going? They were going into a land that was full of giants. It was full of all kinds of idolatry. It was full of all kinds of wickedness. It was a terrible thing that they were going into. You know, they had already walked in circles for 40 years because the first, gen first generation was afraid to go do it. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So now we're in the second generation, and again now we're getting ready to go across the Jordan and enter into a land uh, full of giants, full of idols, full of idolatry, full of all kinds of wickedness. It was not easy. You know, their very first conquest, their very first challenge was Jericho. <laughs> you know, it was tremendous. But God said, I'm going with you. I will be with you. Now, we have tremendous challenges in front of us today. There's tremendous challenges. There's things that are absolutely impossible in the natural. But the thing that I'm trying to communicate to us this morning is this. From the time that I uh, was kneeling and praying, the experience that I've testified to you about, 
And uh, he, the Holy Spirit, it was a personal revelation. I think we all, you know, I can't. My experience, my revelation, is, it's all very personal to every yes. one of us. Yes. And uh, from the time that I met him, who is the third person here on the earth with us, I have endeavored to try to know him and follow him, uh, not separately from God the Father or God the Son, you see. And what I want to do today is tell you things that you already know. The tremendous price that Jesus paid to get us in a position to where the presence, the he of the Holy Ghost, yes. the he, the third person of the Godhead, who's here today, <laughs> that you can see him and hear him and know him and walk with him because those that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. And so we're coming into times where men's hearts will be failing them for fear upon the things coming upon the earth. I don't know why all these people are dropping dead. You know, 40% increase in uh, young men dropping dead. Have you read that? Yes. Have you seen that? Yes. Well, why is that happening? I don't know. But I know that men's hearts are going to fail them for fear because of the things that are coming upon this earth. And so I'm saying, well, you got two choices. Drop dead by fear. <laughs> or allow his presence <laughs> to comfort you and guide you and lead you and grow increasingly into the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because if God be with us, what can be against us? You know, no weapon formed against us can prosper. Amen? Amen? But what I'm challenging us this morning is that it's not just automatic. Even though Jesus paid a tremendous price to get us in a position, a favor, think about it, to get us in a position of grace, grace. where the third person could be right here walking with us, guiding us, talking to us. But here's the thing. Many of us, somehow or other, disconnect. You might walk around for five days disconnected. You may be praying. You may be thinking of the word. You may be considering things as you're at work. And you see, listen, this isn't just for missionaries. This isn't just for pastors or, you know, those, those folks. <laughs> this is for all of us. You see, you need him for your grandkids. The Holy Ghost will tell you what to say, what to do. Amen. You can't do it. You try to. It won't work. It won't work with your kids. It won't work with your neighbors. Amen. It'll teach you how to farm Amen. in this day and hour. It'll teach you how to run your business in this day and hour. It's very practical, folks. <laughs> <laughs> it's very practical. This is not something, you know, <laughs> it's very practical. I mean, There's a little book by a guy that just, just came to my mind. Holy Spirit, just help me. Look it up. There's a little book. It's called by Brother Andrew. It's called The Practice of His Presence. After I got uh, the revelation of the he with me, uh, and I'm not going to go through a lot of this testimony, but you know we overcome by the word of our testimony. After I got that revelation, I remember I went back to my little flock in Roselle, and I said to them, you know what? I went to pray. And I was over there praying and fasting, and he showed up. <laughs> he, the Holy Ghost, came into the room. I said, you guys are going to be all right. I'm going to leave you alone. I'm going to Colorado for two and a half months to be with him because I want to know him more. I know Jesus. He saved me from hell. But I know the third person now. The third person came to the hotel room where I was staying. And I didn't have to stay 10 days. He came on the fourth day. <laughs> and, and he'll do it for you too. And anyway, I said, you're going to be just fine. The Lord's with you. And I went for two and a half months into the top of the mountains outside of Gunness. And I went to, uh, I won't take you through detail. Take too long. The hamburgers are cooking. And, and, I, and, and, and listen, I spent just two and a half months 
endeavoring to know more the third person. First person, second person, third person, you see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and to say, you know, it seemed a little weird at first. I was scared. I said, this seems really strange. <laughs> I was in the top of the mountains. The only thing that was there was trout in the stream and a few elk. Yeah, yeah. And uh, some rancher, I, I found favor in his sight, and he let me up there in a four-wheel drive jeep, uh, you know. And so, you know, I got there, and I was kind of trembling and saying, oh, God, I'm going to lose my mind up here. It was the best thing that ever happened to me, one of the best things. During that time, there were two things that very important happened to me as I went to be with the Holy Spirit, God on the earth with us. He revealed to me who my wife was. I literally had visions of Sue. I hadn't seen her for three years. I hardly knew her last name. But I, I was, first of all, asking God, what's my calling? And he revealed it to me. Then I said, well, who's going to help me? And three years before I had met Sue, I sort of knew her last name. She was in Honduras. I was in the top of the mountains. And uh, I began to see her face in vision. I said, well, if she's the one, you have to bring her up here because I can't leave this place. <laughs> and uh, so he did. But let's go on. You know what? God is good to us. And listen, Jesus paid a tremendous price, and now we may do something, and we may not. I want us to reconsider, even though you know these things, we're going to go through a bunch of scriptures. I was at, we were with uh, <clears throat> Pastor Paul Duarte in, in Tulsa last week, and he was preaching a dynamic message last Sunday. And he said, note takers are history makers, <laughs> you know, because there's no way, well, that uh, we can captivate but all these things I'm going to say to you, 12 points, if we make this through, you know what? Of what Jesus did for us to give us the person of the Holy Spirit to guide us on the earth today, our GPS, you know, Holy Ghost, uh, GPS, guidance, uh, GPS, I figured it out, GPS. It is God's provision of spirit guidance. Give him a hand. You know what? <laughs> I don't know if you got it. <laughs> Sue and I, it's a little spooky, isn't it? So we're driving around, driving around the, the United States, not all over the place, but flying some, driving some. And you know, we're using GPS. Stay in the middle lane, turn right, turn left, arrived. Isn't that amazing, the way that can work? It's tremendous. They're just tracking us, just following us all over. A, 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 speed check ahead. Well, you know, uh, that's a GPS. That's a GPS. But we got a uh, God's provision of spirit guidance. GPS, God's provision of spirit guidance. You want to do that? So anyway, let's look at it. How did this all come about? And you all know. And uh, here we go. Let's see if we can do it. If we can't make it, well, we'll come back next year. All right, first point, y'all know. How did, nevertheless, Jesus said, you know, in John chapter 16, verse 7, he said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it's your advantage that I go away, because if I don't go away, the helper, come on, the GPS, will not come to you, uh, but if I depart, I will send him to you. John chapter 16, verse 7. Now, here's 12 points of what Jesus did for us so that we can have a Holy Ghost guidance system 24 hour 7. 24 hour 7, we never have to disconnect. 1 Peter 2, 24, which you all know, he himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin could live unto righteousness and by whose stripes we're healed. So without that, this is first step in the design of the package that we could have Holy Spirit guidance. First of all, our sins had to be transmitted and our sicknesses transmitted to Jesus Christ on the cross. He who knew no sin, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Without righteousness in God in Christ, you're not going to get the guidance system. You're going to hear static. And so, uh, you know, if we're bearing sin and bearing sickness, it's either that we've slipped out of the faith or we need a touch from God in a certain way to get us delivered from our sin and sickness. Are you, say, are you hearing Amen. me? Amen. Amen. Because actually it's done. You know, really, if we could get the whole package, we could walk in divine health. Divine health. 
Not divine, just divine healing, but divine health. Now, I'm not there, but the promise is there. I've healed your disease. I've forgiven your sin. So it's all over with. Done. Finished package. Now, you know that, and I know that. We all know that. Point two. He became sin for us, you see. He was cut off from the land of the living. And Isaiah 55, 8, and you all know, he was cut off from the land of the living because think of how terrible that was. Jesus had always been with the Father. He had always communed with the Father. And now as our sins are placed upon him and our sicknesses are placed upon him, he's literally cut off from the land of the living. And Matthew 27, 46, that's why he cried out and said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Well, it's because your sins and, and my sins and our sicknesses came upon him. And he, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9, tasted of death for all men. Now, when we talk about tasting of death, we're talking about literally being totally separated. And if you study E.W. Kenyon, and I believe what he says, when our sins and sickness came upon Jesus and he became a sin offering, he literally, body, soul, spirit, was cut off. And as he was cut off, he descended into hell, third point. He went into hell as a common criminal. And Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 9 says, he that, first, he that ascended, first of all, descended. So he had to substitute for you and I in every aspect. He had to go into hell as you and I were going to hell. He is our substitutionary sacrifice. He took our place in everything. And so he went into hell, and there in hell, he even testified of this. He prophesied of it. Jesus did. In Matthew chapter 12 and verse 40, he said, For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, yeah, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So Jesus in hell, taking your place, my place. Oh, my. In hell, point four, he preached to the captives who are waiting, who were held there. First uh, Peter chapter 3, 18 through 20, quickly. For Christ also suffered for once for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Now, made alive in the spirit, and E.W. Kenyon will say here, in hell, boom, the glory of God came to him. He took the keys of death and hell out of the hands of Satan and began to testify, began to preach to those who were there from the, from the days of Noah, by whom he went and preached to the spirits in prison who formerly were disobedient, who, who uh, get this, who once the divine long-suffering, when once the divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah, the divine long-suffering. Would you say that together with me? The divine long-suffering. God waits for us. In his divine long suffering for us to come into all that we need to come into, he is waiting for this nation in his divine long suffering. He really does not want to bring judgment. There will have to be, though, a final judgment. Waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight souls, were saved then through water. Yeah, first judgment. The divine long suffering. Stay with me. So Jesus went and preached in hell. And when he had done that and had taken the keys of death and hell out of the hands of Satan, he began to, he began to come up. And if you can imagine with me, he came up to Abraham's bosom where you find Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all the other Old Testament saints. They were sleeping. They were sleeping there. Remember rich man and Lazarus? And uh, Lazarus went down into Abraham's bosom. Remember the story? Remember Saul when he died? Prophet Saul. Samuel, I'm talking about. Excuse me, Samuel. And Saul was backslidden and went and consulted a witch. Most things, it's an interesting scripture, mysterious scripture, and calls up Samuel because he wanted counsel. And Samuel said, why have you awakened me from this place? I was sleeping. I was resting. Well, Jesus came up through paradise, woke up the Old Testament saints, and there was a resurrection that day of the first fruits of the resurrection. Now, 
Matthew 28, verse 42, but verse 52 says, And the graves were opened, and the bodies of the saints that had fallen asleep were risen and walked in the streets of Jerusalem. These are the first fruits of the resurrection. Jesus and the first fruits. So when he arose on the third day, he took the first fruits of the resurrection with him and presented them to his father. Amen. Do you get it? He took the first fruits of the resurrection and presented them to his father. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 20 and 23, and you'd have to study all of that. But now Christ is risen from the dead, Christ and the first fruits. Now, though, point seven, we're coming along. However, on that resurrection Sunday, that resurrection first day of the week, the most important, well, you and I would not be here today. When he arose from the dead, he became our great high priest. And on that Sunday, along with the first fruits, he carried his own blood into the holy of holies yes. in heaven. Now, come on. I, 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 it's mysterious how he carried it. But if we take a few moments in John chapter 20, and if you would read and study John chapter 20, it's so important to understand John chapter 20. And Mary Magdalene, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb, first of all. Seven demons had been cast out of her. And uh, she saw the tomb was empty. She ran and got, uh, told the disciples. Peter and John came running. And when you read the text there of John chapter 20, you find that John outran Peter and got there first. But they looked in the tomb. They saw it was empty. They didn't hang around. They, they left and went back to the other disciples. But Mary, she stayed. Same Mary who had weapon, uh, wore Jesus' feet with her expensive perfume. And as she looks in the tomb and she saw two angels, and they said, he's not here, he's risen. And she turned, and she saw who she thought was the gardener. But it wasn't the gardener, it was Jesus. And Jesus said her name, Mary. And verse 17 of John chapter 20, apparently she perhaps fell to his feet or wanted to cling to him. And look what Jesus said. Jesus said to her, don't cling to me. Hey, take it easy, Mary. For I have not ascended to my father. Come on. Resurrection day. I've not yet ascended to my father, <laughs> but go and tell my brethren and say to them, I'm ascending to my father and to your father, to my God and to your God. What was he ascending for? He was ascending as our great high priest to go beyond the veil in heaven and pour his blood over the propitiatory, over the mercy seat where the law was that all of us have broken. The law, the holy law, but separating us from a holy God. So you try to approach God, holy God, who is God of love. You try to approach him, but here's a law that is uh, speaking against us because we have broken it. So he, he went into the Holy of Holies, poured his own blood over the law, and satisfied the law, yes. and got eternal redemption once and for all, for all. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 12. Not with the blood of, of, of goats or of calves, but with his own blood he entered into the holy place. Come on, once for all, having obtained something called eternal redemption. Would you give me praise for eternal redemption? Today, you and I have eternal redemption because of that action. Now, listen, that eternal redemption that was happened uh, 2,000, 22 years ago is of no value to a person out here who has not appropriated it. Because Romans chapter, uh, you know, Romans chapter, chapter 3, verse 24, 25, faith in that blood. Well, how are they going to know about the blood unless they hear about the blood? But faith in that blood is what causes us to be eternally reading. Without faith, it's impossible. So Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14, it says, How much more shall the blood of Christ cleanse our conscience? Because there's two places where the law of God has been established, one in heaven and one in the conscience. The blood was poured over the law in heaven 2,000 years ago. When it's poured over your conscience and mine, we have a clearing, we have a connection, we have an entrance because God sees the blood. And when he sees the blood, death cannot touch us. We have eternal redemption. We're out, you see. Give him another clap offering, please. Now, our challenge is, Paul said, speaking about his former life in Romans chapter 7, verse 14, I'm carnal, sold under sin. But you see, 
Galatians chapter 3, 13 and 14, Christ redeemed us from that situation and from the curse of the law, the curse of law, sin and death, having become a curse for us, for it is written, curses is everyone that hangs on a tree, so that the blessings of Abraham would come to us and come to the Gentiles. But now listen carefully to the last part. And that the promise of the Spirit would come. Spirit guidance. We've got to have the Spirit by faith. More of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Father, now lift your hands with me. Now the promise of the Holy Spirit. We've been delivered from the curse of the law. And some of us need a renewal in our connection, a reconnecting with the guidance system, the person of the Holy Ghost. There's really no comparison to a GPS. Forgive me, Father. The tremendous price that was paid to get the Holy Spirit in us, upon us, around us, and guiding us. Now let's continue. Point eight. After making atonement, we have to understand on that same Sunday, he returned that Sunday evening in John chapter 20 and verse 19, first day of the week. The disciples were shut up for fear of the Jews, shut up in a place, and Jesus walked through the walls, breathed upon them in verse 22, and uh, they were born of the Spirit. Because you see, even the disciples could not be born again until the atonement was made. He breathed upon them, and they received the Spirit of Jesus into their lives and were born of Him. Now, He stayed on the earth for 40 days. Over 500 people were seed of him. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 5 and 6 tell us that. And Acts chapter 1, verse 3 says, To whom he pres presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking to them pertaining the things of the kingdom of God. How tremendous. <coughs> Now, all of these fulfillments Jesus was doing, my ninth point, his last word on the earth, and he said, and you all know what he said, but you'll receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you're going to be witnesses unto me in Great Bend, in Hoisington, in Mexico, <coughs> unto the uttermost parts of the earth because his glory is with us. And then he ascended. And when he ascended, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 7, you, God, have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands. Come on. 1 Timothy 6, 15. He who is blessed and only potentate King of kings and Lord of lords. He is seated. Hebrews 1, 3. When he had by himself, listen carefully, purged our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the mighty on high. Imagine with me. Lift your hands to him. There he is. He finished. So he sat down. He is crowned. He is crowned. King of kings, and he is waiting for the precious fruit of the earth, the early and the latter rain, and then he will return, you see, and take it. Now then, 10 days after he was seated on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4, the Holy Ghost, the presence with us, came to the earth. And <clears throat> they spoke with tongues. The fire was upon them. And Peter preached and 3,000 people were saved. So now then, my last point, and to repeat again. Around us, people are frightened. Men's hearts will fail them for fear. But we have something that's so valuable. We not only have the redeeming blood, we not only have the written word, we have a third person with us. And not just as an ability to speak in other tongues and help us pray, 
but as a guidance system. <laughs> Forgive me, Lord. God with us to enable us and guide us into all truth and enable us to do all things. Would you stand with me, please? It's my conviction that quite often when we hear the word of God, not always, but quite often, the word of God should bring us to an altar point. It should bring us to a, to a place of not condemnation, but to a place of conviction. And the point here this morning being, I'm not speaking this just to you, I'm speaking it to us. We need more of him, God with us on the earth. And I'm saying to you today, some of you perhaps, I don't really know. I just know this is the word God gave me. Perhaps some of you need certain reconciliation. You need to make sure you're right and get washed in the blood and get your full deliverance from the power of sin and get really right in your position before him. Others, you know, we received the baptism of the Holy Spirit 20, 30, however many years ago. But the point isn't that. The point is, are ignoring him. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I don't, you know, <laughs> it just happens. And I'm saying, he wants, I know this because of the word he gave me today, he wants our awareness of his presence, you know, <laughs> with us in every endeavor of life. We should have an open heaven. And we should be walking with his presence with us, hearing, acting, because the final analysis, that's what it's gotta be. And so Father, today, I believe it's perhaps different aspects, different hearts here, but I believe one challenge is, do you want more of his guidance? Do you want more of his presence? Do you want to walk in it in an increasing way? To not waste years. You know what? Do you know our years are counted? Yeah. We only have so many years. And we're told to redeem the time. We can't redeem the time if we're disconnected from the guidance system. You may be on a road totally off course. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You know, we got to have the guidance. He said he will guide you. He will lead you. In him we live and move and have our being. And so, Father, today, work with us. I hear faith to faith. That means the faith you had last week or that I had last week. There's another measure of faith. There's another level of faith. It's faith to faith. But it's also glory to glory. And glory is his presence with us. And so Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're here to lead us and guide us and perfect the bride. And Jesus, we thank you today for pray, paying such a great price, such a tremendous price that would give us access. As you said, if I don't go away, <laughs> you won't get it. 
you paid the price. And Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for so loving the world that you sent him to us. That whosoever believed in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And Jesus, you paid a tremendous price to give us the guidance, the comfort, and the leading to take us through all the way to the end. Oh, we thank you. We thank you. Now let's give him, but really from the heart and faith, applauses. Why don't we do that? Good word. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he got done. That's amazing. Hallelujah. Yeah, you're amazing. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, we would have went past. It would, the hamburgers, we have what we call, they're, they're warmers. You can put them in there and they'll stay. Yeah, praise God. They won't just go away. Praise the Lord. They'll wait on us. Hallelujah, because uh, our meat is from him. Amen? Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, um, <clears throat> what we're going to do, because I know we're going to head right over there. We invite you all to come over. Even if you didn't bring anything, we've got plenty of hamburgers and hot dogs. But we're going to go ahead and pray for the meal right now. So, because I, I do know that there's a lingering that happens on over here before we get there. And you'll get there and wonder why we are not there yet. <laughs> Does anybody understand that? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So when those who are, can get it going over there, you just tell them we prayed over here and they can start eating. Yeah. Amen? I think everybody understood that. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this great word. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We want to know you more and be led by you, and we thank you. Lord, we give you thanks for this food. We thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you that it, that it, it is blessed. We thank you, Lord, that even as we eat it, there is a, a fellowship and a bond between us. And Lord God, that we're healed because we recognize the body. We recognize you and we recognize our brothers and sisters. And so we thank you for the food. We thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you for this ministry. And we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You are dismissed. Just head over to the metal building. Hallelujah. And.